God will see us through. Thank God for air conditioners. We used to have little vents on the sides and vents in the top and all the hot air would rush through. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that you're here this morning. The, the question that Jesus posed in these verses is, what think ye of Christ? That's what I want us to look at this morning. Matthew 22. Let me start reading in verse 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit, on, sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. <laughs> uh, Jesus had a way of uh, talking to people that really brought it uh, down to home. And Jesus asked them a, a very basic question for a Jewish person. What do you think of the Christ? The Old Testament had been telling... Uh, over 300 prophecies that the Messiah would come. That was the Old Testament word. The New Testament word is Christ. The Christ would come. Uh, the Redeemer, the one who would save them from their sins. He said, who, who do you think he is? And their answer was, well, we think he's the son of David. And he quotes to them then from, then from Psalm 110, and he says, well, why does David then call him the Lord? And that's what I, the questions that I want to pose to you this, this morning. Now, there's two things that are touched on here, the deity of Christ and the humanity of Christ. Both are very important. Uh, in, in Romans, just listen to, to this verse. He says, uh, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So the same two things. David, call, he's called the son of David, but he's also called David's Lord. He's of the seed of David, but he's also the son of God. And it, it's so important uh, this morning that we understand both of those, those truths. And, and I would ask you, as Jesus did, what do you think of Christ? It is important that we think about him. Uh, I mentioned earlier that even though we call this holiday time Christmas, most people have... No thoughts about the Lord Jesus in their minds. In fact, some think it's quite an intrusion for us to, to mention Jesus Christ <laughs> at this time. And yet it's, it's called Christmas. Um, the first thing I want you to think about is the Bible says that he, was, he is David's Lord. And that's talking about the fact that Jesus is, is the king. Uh, let me grab my, my song book here. We sing the song, I think we sang it this morning, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Uh, let's see, that was number, number eight there. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold Him come, offspring of a virgin's womb, veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. You know, at Christmas time, many people are singing the gospel and yet not hearing it. You know, I see people jigging around, singing things that should cause them to fall on their knees before God. And yet they just use it almost as, as mockery uh, to the Lord Jesus. Uh, we need to understand Jesus is the Lord. He is David's Lord. Uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus is called God. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And later on it says, the Word was made flesh. It's obviously talking about Jesus. Jesus is God. In Hebrews, it says, unto the Son, he saith. It's talking about God says to God the Son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. He's called God. He accepted worship. You know, we sing the song, O come, let us adore him. Well, that's right. We should adore him. We should worship him. The wise men came and worshiped him. Uh, in Jesus' ministry, he had, he had uh, stopped a storm. And the Bible says that they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Uh, later, Thomas said, My Lord and my God. Jesus accepted worship. Now, that's different than others. Peter refused worship. Paul and, uh, and Barnabas refused worship. 
in Revelation 22, John tries to worship the angel. The angel says, no, uh, see thou do it not, worship God. Jesus accepted worship because he's God, because he's worthy. As well, he forgave sins. It really confused people. In fact, it stunned them. He said to one, one person, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. The people said, why did this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Man, they, they hit on the exact answer, but they didn't want to accept it. See, Jesus is David's Lord. Jesus should be your Lord and my Lord because he's, he's the Lord of glory. He said to the woman who washed his feet, thy sins are forgiven. And the people around said, who is this that forgives sins also? He has all the qualities of God. The Bible tells us he was pre-existent. You know, you and I come into existence at conception. Not, not Jesus. He didn't come into existence at Bethlehem. He's the Lord of glory and came from eternity past. The Bible says, Jesus uh, says, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Wonderful. He's immutable. That means unchanging. Uh, Hebrews 13 says he's Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same Lord that he's always been. He's the creator. John 1, 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. <laughs> without him was not anything made that was made. <laughs> Jesus is the creator. He's omniscient. Uh, he's omnipotent. He's uh, omnipresent. In Matthew 18, he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. If Jesus is not the Lord, prayer is a mockery. We pray because we know Jesus is there and Jesus hears. Uh, he is the Lord. He was David's Lord. He needs to be your Lord. But you know, he also was David's son. The, the Bible told that the Messiah would come from the line of David, the tribe of Judah, through Israel. Many specific things that God, that God had said. The Messiah, David's Lord, David's son. The Lord of glory, a human being. Uh, we heard an explanation, I think it was this last week, that, that really uh, struck home with us. We'd had the subject of the Lamb of God. You know how the Bible says that they had to offer a lamb for a sacrifice? And when God offered the perfect lamb, the only one he could offer was himself. God uh, had to become that lamb. But the problem was, God couldn't die. God can't die. So God became a man so that he could die for us. That, that's a pretty good explanation. That's exactly right. That's why he's Lord and he's also man. He's 100% God. He's 100% man. Because you and I are, are faulty. Every human being, the Bible says, all have sinned. But when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. God became man, and what a blessing it is to see uh, how, uh, how the Lord Jesus Christ meets those, those qualifications. I love reading Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. It's obviously about Jesus when he says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. But listen how it continues. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And then listen to the next verse. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. You see, he's David's son, but he's also David's Lord. He had to be exactly who God said he would be. He couldn't have been born in Australia. He had to be born in Bethlehem. <laughs> he couldn't be born of, of a different people. He had to be born of, of Israel, of Judah, of David, and, and so on. And Jesus, uh, as he was ministering, in Matthew chapter 11, John the Baptist was already in prison where he would, he would be killed. Um, but he sent some of his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one? John, when he heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John was pretty sure. He's the one who said, Behold the Lamb of God. But in prison, he was having, maybe having some doubts. I don't know. Are you the one? Are you the one that was prophesied? The one that would be not only David's Lord, 
but David's son. Jesus said this, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now you might not know that, but he's basically quoting there from Isaiah 35 when it tells of what the Messiah would do. And what he's saying to John is, I'm the one. You can tell by what I'm doing. You can tell by who I am. You know, Jesus was such a, a, a gracious and a beautiful person. In um, Luke chapter 4 and uh, verse 17, now this, I, I don't know, I guess in a synagogue, it's pretty common to have somebody read and make comment, especially if they're a visiting rabbi. And as Jesus was, uh, was in the, uh, the synagogue, they, they gave him the book of Isaiah. And he found a place and he read this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He just read right from the, their scriptures. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of them all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him wit witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Jesus read the prophecy of the Messiah, of the Christ, and he said, this day, that's fulfilled. What he was saying is, he's not only David's son, he's David's Lord. You know, he had such a gracious and beautiful life. <coughs> you read about Jesus and you think, what a, what a wonderful person. Uh, healed the sick, defended the weak, full of compassion. You know, the Bible calls him a friend of sinners. Gentle and humble, yet bold and confronting. But you know the problem? Many people just look at his beautiful life and they don't see who he is and where he came from. I've, I've had people say to me, oh yeah, Jesus, he's a great example. He, he was a great teacher. Well, listen, if, if that's all Jesus was, he, he's not who he said he was. The Bible says he came from, from glory. And the reason he came, the Bible says he came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Christ came to die, to be the Lamb of God. And he came uh, from glory. There's a time when he's talking to people in, in John chapter 6. You, you can just see the confusion on their faces as he's, uh, you can imagine the confusion as he talks to them. And he says, I came down from heaven. <laughs> and uh, later on it says, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. Jesus told them who he was. He said, I'm, I'm the son of God. I've come from heaven. I'm the Lord of glory. You see, he wasn't just a good example. He was God the Son. And he came from glory. He was David's Lord. He's God. He was also David's son. He's man. The Bible says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, now what I want you to see this morning is this. Here's two extremes. He's God. He's man. And in Jesus Christ, you have a unique situation the Bible says, uh, for there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Perfectly God, perfectly man. Jesus Christ came to be that, that bridge, that mediator, that redeemer, that one to bridge the gap that sin caused between God and man. God became flesh. Jesus not only claimed to be God, he also claimed to be the only way to God. Man, the world calls that a bigoted statement. And I guess it is. It's the narrow way. <laughs> Jesus says he's the only way. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way. People try other ways. Man, I see people trying all kinds of things. If there's a heaven, well, <laughs> good works, religion, religious ceremonies, drugs, Death, just amazing, awful things sometimes that people will do, thinking, well, maybe this will, if there's a God, maybe he'll love me. Listen, God showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his son. 
And the Bible asks, Jesus asks, what think ye of Christ? See, God had promised a redeemer. God had promised deliverance. What think ye of Christ? Jesus fulfills every prophecy that God said that the Christ would be. Jesus said and did everything that needed to be said and done for our soul's salvation. What think ye of Christ? This is a question for eternity. It'll affect you now, but it'll especially affect you in eternity. See, when you stand before God, see, Jesus has not only come, He's not only God and man, but the Bible says He's going to be coming back as the King. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. Well, let me tell you, Christ will be the judge. His word will be the rule book. <laughs> it's going to be important what you do with Jesus Christ. The Bible says some will be rewarded, some will be condemned. What will make the difference? Jesus. Jesus will make the difference. John 3, 36, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son that's Jesus, hath everlasting life. But, or and, he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, God has showed his love, but if you refuse his love, you'll receive his wrath. Why would we do that? What think ye of Christ? John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on His name. What think ye of Christ? He's not talking about an emotional relationship. He's not talking about um, just some kind of a, a, a form, formal ceremony. He's talking about a relationship that's real, based on a personal relationship between you and God through Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this morning to consider Christ. He laid aside His glory to become your Savior. The Bible says He's the only way to God. He is God. You need to accept the truth that God says that we're all sinners. You and me, everyone. We've all sinned. And the wages of that sin is death or separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why Jesus came. Let me encourage you at Christmas time, this year particularly, if you're not sure about your soul's salvation... Think about Christ. Think about why He came. Why would God come from glory to live as He did if that wasn't necessary? If you could get to heaven another way, listen, God would let you. <laughs> but that's the only way is through Jesus Christ. Your eternity rests on the answer to this question, what think ye of Christ? This morning, if, if you're not sure, we're going to finish with a song. And after the service, you, you may have things you need to do. Maybe you need to rush off. Some of you do, I, I know. But if you're concerned about your soul, listen, there's nothing would be more important than to find out, than to know for sure that you're on your way to heaven, that you have Christ as your Savior. Uh, I'll be available. We'll have other men and women, that, godly men and women, that would be happy to show you from God's Word how to know. He says, these are written that you may know that you have eternal life. It's not based on good works. It's based on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ.